All right. I'd like to call the May 2024 ZBA meeting to order. Will the clerk please call the roll? Matt Kaiser. Present. Brad Fredette. Present. Keith Perkins. Richard Brooks. Present. Anthony Jones. Present. Okay, first order of business will be appoint Mr. Jones as a full voting member. Second item will be approval of minutes. There are no minutes. Item number two is old business. Any old business that may come before the board? Ms. Crosley. No. Any old business from board members? None. Seeing none, we'll move on to new business. Jamie Aldebot is seeking a variance from section 19.20.delta.4.bravo to allow for two freestanding signs on a property located at 497 High Street in the residential slash commercial RC district. It says this is map 40, lot 53, condo map 90, lot 53 Charlie, ZBA case 04 2024. It's a public hearing. I'll open the public hearing. Ms. Crosley. Yep. So as stated, the applicant is seeking to install a second freestanding sign. Um, one freestanding sign is permitted um, per lot. The sign can either be a directory sign or identify the building slash center. The maximum sign area allowable for a freestanding sign for this property would be calculated as follows. There's a base allowance of 48 square feet and then four square feet per the number of businesses. There are three businesses at this property, um, which is a total of 60 square feet total freestanding sign area allowable. Um, there is an existing freestanding sign that is utilized by Tire Warehouse um, that is 32 square feet. And you have seen this property a couple times now um, in the past year or so. Um, most recently, it was for Jamie to establish for a special exception to establish a motor vehicle services indoor car detailing business, which the board approved that all motor vehicle service work shall be contained within the building and shall not be done in the parking lot. That shall include washing of cars. He did then go to the planning board to get that part of the site plan aspect vetted um, and a waiver from the parking requirement. Um, and he has answered the five criteria questions that is in the application and a supplemental um, additional information one that he provided. So the board has jurisdiction to consider this variance request. Okay, any questions for Ms. Crosley? Seeing none, Mr. Aldabot, please come up and explain why we should grant the variance, how you meet the five criteria. Hello, members of the board. My name is Jamie Aldabot, for the members who doesn't know me. So as Dan was stating, uh, this property has a 60 uh, square feet allowances, but the only bad thing about the property is that the current sign is, of the tire warehouse is on the right side of the property, and then my unit is, is on the left side. So if I install my uh, signage on the current standby on the right side, people will not find my my work because it's located on the left side. Uh, right now it's uh, currently uh, 28 uh, square feet available based on the size of the uh, property. And I'm only applying for 15 square feet. And uh, yeah, that's all I have. Okay. Questions for the applicant? Mr. Jones. Um, so you have two curb cuts on an existing state highway, and the entrance to your unit in this condominiumized commercial development is on the right side of the building, not the face? On the left side. On the left side, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. looking at it. Uh, looking at it, yes. Right side. Right side. Okay, and then that side is completely separate wall down the middle from the tire warehouse building on the left side, and that's where the sign is for the existing tire warehouse? Yeah, I mean, the other side is tire warehouse. There is not a wall. It is like a U-turn. Well, I meant in the building. Oh, the building, yes. The building's yeah, all right, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, okay, so th there's really no overlap between the two businesses. It's one half of the building goes to one, one to the other. If you had to park on one, you'd be walking all the way around to the other. That is correct. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Other questions? Mr. Brooks. I think this would be more directed towards Dana Crosley now that I think about this. So this is obviously for additional separate sign he's not looking for two himself he's looking for one and just can't simply add on the other one by the sounds of it um does the condo agreements 
play into signs at all? Do they address that? Um, if they do, that would be on the private sector for them to enforce for themselves. Whatever relationship they have, they still have to abide by our ordinance. Um, okay. It's not, I don't know their condo documents gotcha. to the full extent. I think so they you're were, not the one to ask about it then? No, it would okay. be the property owners for I, better information on I, that. I figured it was a legal thing that the city would have to document. Or the we county, whichever. have them, and I have briefly looked at them, but I don't feel knowledgeable enough to comment regarding if they had said anything about signage fair enough then i'll just direct that question to the applicant then is there you know obviously you must rent this from a landlord of some sort but is do you have any knowledge of this condo agreement as far as how this is laid out and does it address signs well the, um, this property has two owners the right side of the property which is tire warehouse has a one owner and then the left side which is at and is another owner and I already spoke with the, my uh, landlord in regards to that. If I put a sign, it would be an issue for AT and TME. I, it's not going to be an issue. We, she already spoke with the tenant, her current tenant, mm -hmm. and they don't have any issues with it. Yeah. So I'm, I'm realizing more. It's kind of obvious, but yeah, condos can be owned separately. So we're talking a separate owner, a separate sign from yeah. a separate owner. So just wrapping my head around the situation, why we're asking this, and so on. Um, and obviously, I assume you've had, well, I, the question is, have you talked to Tire Warehouse about adding on to their sign, or is that just well, not something that's possible? The thing is, like, if I put my sign on their side. True. Yeah. I, that's where right. the... I, I see the reference there, too. Yeah. All right. Just trying to no, think of the, all the aspects here. All right, Mr. Alba. So, if I was standing in the street looking at the building, can I see your your building, your business? If you're looking at the front of the property, no. Okay. So, I would have to be quite a way down the street to actually see the doors going into your building. Only on the right side, facing the, because you cannot, you're gonna, you're not gonna be able to see my my business from the left side for okay, people so who are driving. From the left side. Yeah. So if it was coming down High Street, now was there any building or vegetation in the way to see your yours? Yeah. So it's not a direct view to see. So like AT and T, for example, AT and D has a sign on the building yeah. that people can clearly see. If you put a sign on your on the building above your garage door, could you see it from the street? I actually already did, and um, that there's vegetations. Right, night, right next to it, mm -hmm. that for people who at night, because you had lights, mm -hmm. they're going to have to either look through that side to locate my, my, my unit. And, and based on our map, that vegetation isn't even on the property that you, exactly. on, your pro on the property you lease, rent, whatever, uh, it's on someone else's property. That's right. Adjacent, an adjacent property. Yeah. Okay. Other questions for the applicant? Oh, so the sign you, you're thinking about, you, is there a, Ms. Crosley, is there a sign permit been filled out yet? Yes. One came, you submitted one with yeah. the at the same time with the variance. Yes. I apologize, I don't have it with me if anyone wanted to see that. So but we can get it if you Describe like. what the sign would look like. Yeah, it is just a square, um, five, uh, three by five uh, square feet signage. So it is just a simple, same as the tire, tire warehouse has. Just same guidelines. I don't try to do go crazy with it. Just whatever the guideline is, I'm going with it. Okay. Just a three by five. Three by five. So imagine this sign made out of wood, metal. Um, it'll be metal frame, and then on the outside, either acrylic or vinyl. Okay. But meeting all other, obviously, you're going to meet all, all other the requirements for That's a right. sign. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Brooks, is that going to be a double-sided sign or just one side? Double-sided. Other questions for the applicant? Okay. Final comments by the applicant. Um, no, I'm just trying to 
uh, let people go, oh, let all my customers see where I'm located. Because right now it's really, really hard to for them to locate me because I'm right behind of AT&T. And uh, yeah, that's all I have. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you much. Have a seat. With that, I'll close the public hearing. First order of business is um, regional impact. Um, I'm not seeing any regional impact. Does anyone see any regional impact? Mr. Fredette, you? No, I do not. I'd like to make a motion, yep. if it would please the chair. Per, um, I remove that the variance request of Jamie Adelbot um, does not have potential for re regional impact. We have a motion second by Mr. Brooks. Any further any discussion on the motion? The motion is that it does not have regional impact. All those in favor of the motion, raise your right hand. Pass is 5-0. Discussion on the variance. Mr. Fredette and then Mr. Brooks. Um, I think this is a, a region, reasonable request. The applicant has been before this board before. I drove by um, a lot of things cited by Mr. Jones about it being a condominiumized building with a separate curb cut, the way traffic flows on High Street. Um, it, it really, that tire warehouse sign, everybody's going to have to drive past his building and be past the curb cut almost to even find him. And it is not really particularly visible from the road. Okay, Mr. Brooks, Mr. Jones. And this also seems unique as it's been conduized, so there's different owners to it. Uh, I, I think most of the multi-business locations have one owner that leases out properties. So I think that makes this unique in that sense. And, you know, he's not asking for an overly large sign. Overall, it's still going to be within the square footage allowed for a single building, um, even if it had multiple businesses. So he's being respectful of it in that sense. Um, you know, it does kind of make me wonder if there should be language about signs to condo situations like this, because obviously if it's different owners, they're not always going to agree or work together. Um, just something to think in the future if we're going to be adjusting signed ordinances. So just for clarification, that there are other condo type units in the city. Um, this The property, collect me if I'm wrong, was created, but the, the actual land is owned by one person, correct? One organization. And the building is the condo. Typically with condos, the, there is there is shared areas and there is specific um, areas. How exactly the land is delineated on this one, I don't have the full extent of the information. Um, it's likely made clear in their condo documents. The um, site plan from when it was created doesn't it's from the 90s and doesn't call out traditionally today the condo plans get recorded to and there could be condo plans for this one that i'm not familiar with but um as far as the business-wise building yes they are split down the middle in their own separately the land is not something i have the full full confident information typically land is shared though to some extent right. so mr brooks mr jones yeah, I'd expect this is kind of a unique, unique case. Normally, especially with condominiumized commercial units, the signage package would be part of that recorded site plan. Um, where this predates that requirement, it's definitely one that's quote unquote fallen between the cracks. So it, th that kind of makes this a one off scenario where the hardship here is pretty specific to the fact that the unit can't be seen from the street. So there's no real benefit to, um, yeah, there's no there's no real benefit to the applicant by uh, preventing signage on the street where forcing it on the building would would be of any service to the public because it wouldn't be visible. Um, so I think in that regard, this is a pretty reasonable request. It's not like they're looking to go double the sign limit. Their square footage is staying, really. It's just that extra post. Mr. Brooks? And just another thought about that is most of these that do have separate units. They stretch left to right, so you, they all have frontage on the building. This is one where... It's divvied up half, and then each half, I guess, is divvied up into maybe two units. So you end up with the ones that are in the very back that have no frontage on the building, making it very tough to see. And again, with the different curb cuts, it's 
definitely a unique situation. Yeah, precisely. And I'd prefer if everybody had one's plaza style sign with all of them on it, but it's hard to enforce that retroactively once the once the site's built out and recorded. Yeah, I think looking at it, I mean, I, I believe that the, the, the biggest thing that makes it unique is the fact that it's, it's not street facing. The, 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 the business is not street facing. The secondary, there's a secondary one, which has two driveways, you know, and then there's others that have two driveways, but the two driveways are, are in this case, are in either side of the building. So it's, it, and if you look at where the tire warehouse existing sign is, it's all the way looking at the building all the way to the left. So to add to that sign would not be, would not bring people to his biz, business. It would definitely bring it to the wrong side, into the wrong driveway and down the wrong item. Even if, if we made them make one sign and put it, let's say in the middle, there's an access issue in that the space between the road and the building isn't really large enough to put a sign and still be able to drive through like they currently have that access. We'd be restricting that access. We made them put the sign there because once you put a sign there, you got to put certain curbing around it and there's other requirements you have to put. So making them put a, a common sign like 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 Market Basket or that, that plaza has would be difficult to do to make it more reasonable. Um, addition, looking at the cri other criteria, uh, an additional sign, one additional, uh, one other thing on the sign, the, the, the size, the size is reasonable in that if you think you have 60, if you have 60 square feet for that building, tire warehouse is half of it, so they should, in theory, get about 30 square feet. And then there's two, two on the other side, AT&T and his business, 15 and 15. So he's being reasonable in his number. The number actually works out pretty good to based on the number of building, another number of businesses in that building and, and any area of that building. Um, the additional sign I don't think would affect any other property values. I really don't think an additional 15 square foot, additional, a second sign will do that. Um, I don't think it's contrary to the public interest. The sign is going to be installed per the sign, the other ordinances, so it's not going to be a, a safety hazard. Um, it'll be meet all the re other requirements of the sign ordinance. Uh, do substantial justice. It'll give him a sign such that people will come to his business, and it'll be it'll be, direct them better. Uh, and the last item is that contrary to the spirit of the ordinance, it's not going to overcrowd the area. Uh, if the board wishes, we could put a criteria that this sign has to be to the right of the right driveway, or the, I don't know, is that the north or the easterly side of the road? If we, if we wanted to put that criteria um, on there, we could, if we thought spacing was an issue. Um, I'm not sure if the board wants to do that or not. Good yeah, um, my only concern with that is it obscures visibility entering in on that, on a right turn. If That's the sign, where the sign's gonna go anyway. Wouldn't it go on the other side? On the inside of the island? I don't think so. It could, but uh, well, if it's, if it's high up enough, then I guess it's it, it'll probably go where the uh, the I, I would think it would go where the previous real estate sign was. But you're right. I don't. I didn't, we, it is part of the ordinance that it can obstruct traffic. So, however, it's oriented would need to just be to the point that it doesn't. So, okay, fair point. Either way, whatever the board's most comfortable for conditions or no conditions, things no. like that. I mean, I'm not hard on that. I'm just asking, just pulling that out there for the board. Mr. Mr. Fredette? Should we specify, if we approve this motion, that it be for the rear unit? Oh. It has to be because they're the applicant, right? Are you intending that, like, whomever's in that first unit where AT&T is now would not be able to utilize it, you're thinking? Well, if we are, just because if we're saying it is because there is no visible face from the road, the same, it sounds like the same owner owns the front and the rear unit. So that was the only rationale for my question. Because the application is for 197 I'm sorry, 497 High Street. It doesn't specify a unit. Well, it has the condo map, but that, that's a good point. Um, I guess, is the is the unit kind of minimized in half, where one half is tire warehouse, the other half is two units that are being leased out, or is it a three-unit condominium? So it's technically a three-unit <laughs> condominium. Okay. So the tire, so yeah. Um, so tire warehouse occupies two units, so as the original site plan, so from the 1990s, the original site plan created three units. There's the tire warehouse, and, and it was Midas and um, 
The original approval was for Midas and another car um, type auto one. So there was like an unidentified space in tire, where Tire Warehouse is now. Which, VIP. VIP, thank you. Um, they occupy all of that side now. And then the original of this side was just for one unit. Okay. And then they've been going through the process to utilize the that the space where this tenant is now has been vacant. So they've been going through the process to utilize it. It is owned by one person. So they it is technically two units inside of the one condo space. So there's no legal distinction between the rear unit enclosed area and the AT&T unit. They're they're one entity. They're not subdivided. Right. They are owned legally as one condo property, I guess. I'm um, not sure we can restrict it to only one half of the ownership. I, I don't know that. Because it would run with the unit that we approve it for. I guess that was what I'm, I was trying to yeah. fish out. Yeah. I would think that as well. That's an interesting, that's an interesting point. Uh, either way, they would have to come back before the board for a change in the signage that would be on a non-conforming post. Could we, could we include a condition in the approval that it follows or is subject to review by staff every time there's a tenant change? Every time a sign changes, it requires a new permit. So even if you reface, so if the size of the sign never changed, but you reface it, it requires a sign permit. So it would naturally go through that process. Yeah, I think the only question is, what does the board want to be left with in terms of restrictions on who can make use of this sign, if any, where there's two tenants in one unit? I don't have an issue having it. You know, the one side has one side and the other side has another. I don't have an issue with yeah, that. Yeah, because they'd have to share either way, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I don't have an issue with that. Okay. For the discussion. <laughs> well, we'll entertain a motion then. Mr. Fredette. After review of the application, the file and all the information presented to the board, I feel that all five criteria have been satisfied for the reasons discussed tonight, and I move that the request of Jamie Adelbot for a variance from section 19.20.d.4.b to allow for two freestanding signs on a property located at 497 High Street be granted. We have a motion to move a second. Second by Mr. Perkins. Question to the board, do we want to limit it to the 15, square, should we limit it to the 15 square feet? Or is we just? It, they would exceed it if they went over that anyway, right? No, they could go up to, we basically could go up to 38. 20, 28, 20. Uh, go up to 28. And the variance is only for the second sign, not from size. So anything they would put would be added in with a tire warehouse. Right, so they go up to so, 28. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have a problem leaving it without a, size because they didn't ask for a variance on that end of it. Yep, yep. I, I agree. We want to restrict it to smaller. Feels like maybe they should deserve half if they're half of a unit. I don't know. Just throwing it out there. The remaining the 28. I mean, I, I, guess if, I guess if we limited it to half of the overall size, it would prevent maybe the other side from making a bigger sign just to steal more than their half, so to speak. But I don't know if we need to get <laughs> That's that. That's a private property right issue. I don't want to get into that. <laughs> I don't want to get into that. I don't. I don't. I, just throw it. Mr. Fredette, you Or, you know, as presented, I mean, we could approve what he's asking for, which is, I mean, he's presented a sign size in this request. I don't think it's necessarily unreasonable to grant the request is presented for a three by five sign but i think what we're saying is we're granting the post not the size so if we grant the post they'd be allowed to put a 28 square foot sign on that post yeah right. I, I don't have a problem with that i think yeah i mean i think we're getting lost in the weeds on this we one to an extent we are in the weeds. you're right all right so we have a motion to uh, approve the approve the variance with no conditions any further discussion on the motion 
All those in favor of the motion, raise your right hand. Pa passes 5-0, variance is granted. Three Bravo, any other new business come before the board? Ms. Crosley. Please remember the um, Master Plan Natural Resource uh, Workshop is tomorrow night, community meeting. We hope to see you all there or anyone that's watching. Um, it's from 6 to 7.30, so it'll be here in Council Chambers. All right. Anything, any new business come from the board members? Chair, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Mr. Brooks, second by Mr. Perkins. All those in favor? We are adjourned.